Beginning in 1946, thousands of pioneers, men, women, and children, headed westward to Zion. Their great faith steered their boundless courage. For some, that trip was never finished as they died along the way. Others, faith in adversity, pressed forward in faith. Because of them, generations later, my family enjoyed the blessing of the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Much like another young man, who I will mention later, I was 14 when I started questioning religion and my faith. I attended to the church of another denomination close to my house, but I felt the desire to visit many different churches. One afternoon, I noticed two young men in dark suits and white shirts entering into my neighbor's home. Those young men looked special. The next day, I asked my next door neighbor, Leonor Lopez, and asked her about those two men. Leonor explained to me that they were missionaries of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. She joyfully told me that her family was baptized in the church a year earlier. Seeing my interest, Leonor invited me to meet the missionaries and learn about the church. Two days later, I joined the Lopez family to meet the missionaries. They introduced themselves as John Messerly from Ogden, Utah, and Christopher Osorio from Wano Creek, California. I will never forget them. Since I was only 14, Edward Messerly insisted we go next door to my home so my mother could know what they were teaching me. There, he kindly explained that they came to share a message about Jesus Christ and asked for her permission to teach me. Mother agreed and even joined us while they taught me. The missionaries first asked Leonor to offer a prayer. This touched me very deeply because her prayer was not a repetition of memorized word, but an expression of her heart. I felt she was really talking to her heavenly father. The missionaries then taught us about Jesus Christ. They showed a picture of him that impressed me because it was the picture of the resurrected living Christ. They continued teaching us of how Jesus established his church in ancient times with him at the head joined by 12 apostles. They taught us about apostasy, how truth and Christ's authority had been taken from the earth after his apostle died. They told us of a young 14-year-old boy named Joseph Smith, who during the early 1800s visited different churches searching for truth. As time went on, Joseph Smith became even more confused. After reading in the Bible that God can ask of, that we can ask of God for wisdom, Joseph, acting in faith, retired to a grove of tree and prayed which church he should join. One of the missionaries read Joseph's mid account what happened as he prayed, I saw a pillar of light exactly over my head about brightness of the sun which descended gradually until it fell upon me. When the light rested upon me, I saw two personages whose brightness and glory defied all description, standing about me in the air. One of them spake unto me, calling me by my name, and said, pointing to the other, This is my beloved son, hear him. During the, that lesson, the Spirit confirmed to me several truths. First, God listened to all his children's sincere prayers, and heaven, heaven is open to all, not just a few. Second, God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost are three separate beings united in their purpose to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. Third, we are created in God's image. Our Heavenly Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, have bodies of flesh and bone like us, but they are glorified and perfected, and the Holy Ghost 
is a person of a spirit. Fourth, through Joseph Smith, Jesus Christ restored the gospel and true church to the earth. The priesthood authority conferred on Christ's apostle 2,000 years ago is the same priesthood authority conferred upon Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery by Peter, James, and John. Finally, we learn about another testament of Jesus Christ, the Book of Mormon, written by ancient prophets. It tells of the people who live in the Americas before, during, and after the birth of Jesus. From it, we learn of how they knew, loved, and worshiped Christ, who appeared to them as the, re as the resurrected Savior. The spirit, me, the spirit moved me profoundly as I learned of the Savior's declaration to them. Behold, I am Jesus Christ, whom the prophet testified shall come into the world. The missionaries gave us our own copy of the Book of Mormon. We read and accepted the invitation found at the end of the Book of Mormon, which reads, and when ye shall receive these things, I would exhort you that ye would ask God, the Eternal Father, in the name of Christ, if these things are not true, and if ye shall receive ask with a sincere heart, with real intent, having faith in Christ, he will manifest the truth of it unto you by the power of the Holy Ghost. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, ye may know the truth of all things. It has been almost 45 years since my mother and I first learned the joy and power of having faith in Christ. It was because of their faith in Christ that the Lopez family shared their new faith with me. It was because of their faith in Christ that these two missionaries left their homes in the United States to fund my mother and me. It was the face of all those dear friends that planted a master seed in our faith, of faith in, the, in us, that has grown into a mighty tree of eternal blessings. During these blessed years, we have known as President Nelson, Russell M. Nelson declared, everything good in life Every potential blessing of eternal significance begins with faith. Allowing God to prevail in our lives begins with faith that He is willing to guide us. True repentance begins with faith that Jesus Christ has the power to cleanse, heal, and strengthen us. I invite all, us all to continue to increase our faith in Christ who has changed the life of my beloved mother and me, and continue to change the life of all those who seek him. I know that Joseph Smith is the prophet of the restoration, that President Nelson is our prophet today, that Jesus is our living Christ and our Redeemer, and that Heavenly Father lives and answers all his children's prayer. I testify of this truth in the sacred name of Jesus Christ, amen.